What's up? Hey, no bandage today. Um, I'm going to try to get through some check-ins. We'll see. We'll see how it goes because pretty limited use, um, pretty sore, but I'm letting it air a little bit and trying to get it to heal. And uh, But anyways, I got some knives that need checked in. I'm going to start here today with this Tucson and we'll see how we progress. So, yeah, I don't know the number of this one, but if it's not on here, then of course I'll find it. See, this is the stuff right here is like trying to use that hand. Um, I tried to use it earlier for some other stuff and I found myself giving up on it because my hand's not cooperating. But I thought, well, we'll try a knife. Man, look at this thing. I'm going to go ahead and get packaging out of the way right away. There we go. Wow, look at this beaut. I mean, see, and I'm used to, like, even this, I'm used to holding and wiping with my towel. And so it's kind of odd. But, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump my way through it. Y'all didn't watch my videos because of my dexterity in my left hand right i think it was maybe a little deeper than that but wow look at this man the milling in this titanium that's been anodized very cool oh come on man this thing wow do we got a model number yeah, it's a TS-413 Wong Design D2 Steel. Titanium, titanium insert, which I don't really see a way to get this insert out. I'm pretty sure that that's going to be glued in there. I'm not sure. We'll see when we get it apart, but let's move this towel. I want to run this action a little bit. I mean... I said this a while back that Tucson's killing it with models right now, but a lot of them are definitely on the large to extra large category. This thing's got a lot of oil inside of it too. Pretty stiff detent. I'm going to go ahead and try that Spidey Flick. There it is. But yeah, we're pretty stiff here. Blade centered. It's got them big thumb studs that are poking just beyond the scales. Let's get a good straight down shot. And yeah, just a little bit beyond the scales. I mean, interesting. What an interesting piece. Excellent action. Here's this choke-up thing. I am not a fan of these choils that, that so many knives are coming with now. I'd much rather have the blade, a sharpening choil, and then back here. It's my preference, but I'm not a knife designer, so. Well, let's get in it. Here's the, here's the test, right? Can I actually function here to get in knives? I think I can. Let's see. That wasn't very tight. No Loctite. There we go. Yeah. I mean. There we go. It was iffy. I had no idea. I didn't know if I'd be able to do that or not. It's amazing how how much we count on our non-dominant hand, right? Like I'm right-handed, but that don't seem to matter with any of this. I mean, all this stuff's just falling apart now. Except there's one one of these right here that's sticking up. There it goes. Got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I do see there's screws that hold them liners in. 
about it. These inserts. I believe they're going to be the same on this side. But with the amount of oil that's going on here, I'm going to go for it. Only because it doesn't make a lot of sense to leave all this oil. I'm pretty sure there's a ton of oil behind that scale or that insert. We're about to find out. We'll do this one and and uh, if this one's got oil, then we'll do the other one. If it doesn't, I don't know, maybe I'll pass. Yeah, it's completely covered in oil. Look. Look at all that oil back there. And of course, you know, all that oil is going to want to work its way around the edges and onto my hand, which is not what I want to have happen. This is covered in oil. Covered in oil. Almost there. We'll get this other scale. It'll also do this lock bar. Or this, uh, uh, I don't know. Line, liner insert. Uh, liner lock. Bolster lock. I'm guessing these screws are doing double duty. We'll see. Or there's screws underneath it for that insert. Not sure which. Nope, they went straight through into that liner. Yep. Okay, yeah, covered in oil. All right. And of course, now the hardest part for me is holding on to everything and wiping all this oil off, man. Wow. All right. I mean, at this point, I'm just committed to keeping it clean. And uh, I've got a little coating of uh, bacterial medicine on top of it. Keep, keep it from getting infected. And uh, I, think, I think the pain that I'm experiencing is just from tissue damage from that bullet passing through. But, I mean, you know, what you gonna do, man? I was trying to think the other day, what's the most pain that I've ever been in? And, uh, uh, this was up there. I mean, I've been... Hey, this is a great spot for me to shout out to a fan and watcher of the channel, Jessica. Hey, Jessica, I appreciate you watching the channel. And uh, I know your dad had mentioned you were a little curious when I said that I had been bit three times. And so I was just about to talk about that. And so it got me thinking about you. And so... Yeah, when I said I'd been bit three times, I did mean that I'd been shot by a gun three times. And so, yeah, this is my third. And Jessica, I'm really hopeful it's my last. <laughs> yeah, because none of them was any fun. And uh, But this one I caused myself. Uh, the other two I did not. And uh, yeah, so hey... Jessica, I appreciate you watching the channel. Uh, your dad says that you're quite the fan. And he also told me that you were interested in doing your own YouTube thing. So I want to encourage you to absolutely do that. And there's a couple of secrets that I'm going to share with you and the rest of my channel, everybody that's watching, Secrets about starting a YouTube channel. And uh, they're my, my personal secrets. And so I'm going to share them with you, Jessica. And the rest of the channel gets to listen in. So here goes. Here's the secret. The main secrets to having a YouTube channel. The difference between people that have channels and the people that don't. 
And here's the main difference. The people like myself that have channels, one day decided, hey, I'm going to do that, and then just do it. I know that that seems really simple, but it's the truth. If if it's something that you think you want to do, I, I read this somewhere about starting a YouTube channel. Uh, I read it from people that had multiple channels that have gone viral and lots of watchers. And the advice they gave is that if it's something you want to do, just do it. Don't worry about perfect content. Don't necessarily worry about perfect videos. Man, just do it. Start filming, whatever, you know. It does help to kind of figure out what you're interested in. Like me, I, I, I'm interested in knives. Now, I'm going to have some, some other content as the channel grows, but the knife thing is a natural for me because I buy knives and collect knives, and I check them in and take them apart. And so I thought, man, I, I'm just going to start filming it and do a YouTube channel. Well, and of course, the, all the advice I got was to absolutely do that. Don't worry about it being perfect or, you know, will people like it or whatever. In the end, I think what people appreciate, it's what I appreciate when I watch YouTube channels, is people just being themselves. Just be genuine. And sometimes that doesn't happen right away. Sometimes it's hard when you first turn the camera on and and do that. Um, but figure out who you are what you want your channel to be about, sort of. You don't have to put it in a box necessarily, but kind of figure out what you're about and then start doing videos and then post them, upload them. I mean, listen, one of the hardest parts, Jessica, to do on YouTube is starting the channel, doing the videos, editing the videos, uploading the videos to the channel, um, and then going through all the the uh the editorial stuff once it's uploaded and then scheduling it you know I, heck that it took more of a learning curve to figure all that out than anything um but i want to encourage you if it's something you want to do even at nine years old you should just do it i'm sure your dad will encourage you as well and help you and you know you need to involve your dad for sure but yeah be encouraged if it's something you want to do listen if I can do it, <laughs> you, listen, I shot myself. <laughs> and so I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer for sure. And uh, if I can do it, you most certainly can do it. And so anyways, Jessica, I really appreciate you watching the channel. I appreciate your question about when I said I've been bit three times. Did I mean by a gun, you know, having enough interest? And, uh, and then wishing me well and that I have a speedy recovery. So anyways, Jessica, I appreciate you hanging around the channel and, uh, yeah. So I appreciate you and your dad a lot supporting the channel and going along for the ride and watching me do what I do here. Yep. Um, Hey, to everybody else, though, sincerely, too, man, if if you're interested in doing a YouTube channel, believe me, I am, I am definitely not one of those that's trying to protect, <laughs> you know, um, what's going on or, you know, anything like that. If, if man, listen, it's the same in small business. Uh, I've started a couple of businesses in my life, and here's what I know about starting a small business. The difference between people that do it and the people that think about doing it and don't do it is the doing. That's it. There's no magic formula necessarily. I mean, you can prepare your whole life to start a small business or to launch a YouTube channel. You can prepare your whole life and then never pull the trigger waiting for the perfect preparation and getting all your ducks in a row and you know I, making it perfect and you know a youtube channel is a great example of that in that um you know in the beginning when you first launch a youtube channel ain't nobody watching 
Nobody's paying attention. It's just you and a camera, like I've said before, just me and this camera talking to myself. That's all that's going on. And and what it's done is it's allowed me a voice in my knife collecting because if I didn't do this, I'd be sitting right here today, probably checking in this same knife. I'd be right here taking it apart, going, I wonder if this screw and and I wouldn't have anybody to talk to. Oddly enough, I, I still don't. I'm talking to myself, right? And so it's it's interesting the dimension that it's add to, added to my hobby. Like I'm I'm talking about it now where I wouldn't have been had it not been for my YouTube channel. And yeah, I'm going to relieve that tension on that lock bar just slightly. And uh, I may have to come back to this a couple of times. I hope not. Hopefully I got it right the first time. Um, but it's all guesswork anyways. We'll see. I mean, I I didn't, here's what I didn't do. I didn't measure it out to begin with to kind of see where it was. And I should have. I'm a little off schedule here. But that's all right. Um, yeah, so, I mean, the difference between people that have it and people that don't is in the doing. It's just do it. There's no perfect content. There's no, you know, I, I mean, yeah, see, that's not, it's not the way that I want to be doing this at all. I think maybe I should do this. It's because I, I can't put a solid grip on anything. But that seemed pretty good right there. Nobody wants to watch me flail myself with a screwdriver. I don't either. Um, yeah, so, I mean, my son's got a YouTube channel. I've talked about it uh, here on this channel a couple of times. He does, um, like, stunt Harley riding. And he hangs out with a group of stunt riders um up in minnesota and they film what they're doing and so he started a channel called harley culture it's about him and riding and you know all that and i give him the same encouragement man hey just do it and not like i'm an expert what do i know i mean i'm stupid man but here here's what i do know i just started it i didn't you know i i did watch a couple of videos from people that had successful channels and the advice was basically along the lines of how I think about starting small business, man. If if you want it, if you're interested and you want to do it, the main thing is do it. Don't you know? Don't overthink it. I mean, obviously you don't want to invest a bunch of money and and not think it through solid and make good decisions. I mean, right? Like you don't want to rush forward and make bad decisions and lose lose your investments. Um, but in the end, it's about the doing. Just get busy. All right. Runaway parts, man. Runaway parts. You know, I, hey, so I, I digress. I don't even know what I was talking about. What I, what I can tell you is that a hundred million percent, the difference between those that own small businesses. You know, at one time in my life, I thought, man, what's the formula to doing that? I see so many people, you know, independently successful. And, you know, how do, how do you do that? And I, I just came to believe that the difference between those that do and those that don't, you know, those that have a business and those that want to have a business, is you just got to do it. You just, you just got to do it. I mean, how else can you explain a migrant coming to the country and within two years they own four convenience stores? I mean, how do you do that? Well, because migrants are told that it's the land of opportunity, that you can achieve anything here in America. You can, you know, you can own your own business. You can do whatever you want. So they, they come here, have nothing to their name. And within a year or two, they, you know, I'm not going to say they're wealthy, but they're they're doing their own thing. They're they're privately, uh, they they own their own companies and they're working on their own. And 
you know, it's one of the things that motivated me. It's just like, well, you know, at one point I thought that it's because they were being treated special. I mean, I'll tell you the truth. I thought, well, you know, if I was an immigrant coming to this country, you know, I'd have special things available to me that would allow me to own my own business. I mean, look at, look at how some of these immigrants within a year or two, they own, you know, several businesses or whatever. And I mean, I'm just going to tell you that my experience tells me that that's hogwash there, you know, that, that the, the difference is, or the reason for that is somebody told them that it's a land of opportunity and that they can live like that. They can do that. And so they just do it. They, you know, they research and go, well, what do I got to do to buy a business? What do I have to do to, to get financing? What do I, and they just, they go forward. And so, Hey, I, you know, I will encourage all y'all YouTube channel or your own business, whatever. If, if it's on your heart to do it, if it's something that you'd like to do, then just do it. You know, I mean, make a commitment and say, Hey, here's my launch date. I'm going to do this. I'm starting my own company. I'm starting my YouTube channel. I'm starting whatever and just do it. Wow. Is this thing so much better? I, you know, I, I guessed I took a little bit off of that detent and then I put a little bit back and wow, is this thing good? I don't have a lot of lockup. It looks like I'm mm, 20% and I may have to put some back. Let's see. Yeah. Instant failure. All right. Well, I'm going to pause because we're getting long winded here. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, <clears throat> let's wrap up. So I have this thing working perfectly now. And what I, what I did was I took this out. And I removed a little bit of material from the face of it. If you look, it's still not much more than maybe 30% lockup. Um, and I still have wonderful drop shut action. Spidey flick is, I mean, right on point. And, yeah, we're completely locked up now. So sometimes the solution is to work on the face of the the uh, liner lock or the lock bar, what it, you know, the frame lock, the metal insert, whatever that is. Sometimes, sometimes that is the solution. And on this knife, I chose to do that. And so what I, in essence, what I was able to do versus putting all that tension, you know, the other alternative was to put a bunch of tension in this to hold this over. And instead, I just refaced that that liner lock a little bit, that bolster lock, whatever you want to call it. I refaced it a little bit, which allowed it into the blade a little bit and then did it at the right angle so that it locked up pretty good. Yep. Yeah. So action wise, man, this thing, it's a action all day long now. It's wonderful. I mean, standard Tucson titanium action, man. I mean, honestly, I'm not surprised a bit. If this is your first video really paying attention to a Tucson, you might go, wow, that's pretty good for a Tucson. But no, nah, it's standard stuff, man. Locked up, super tight, no wiggle in this knife, whether it's locked or whether it's unlocked. This, I mean, on them bearings, just as solid as it could be. And the action is just drop shut. A-level a, a action, 100%. You know, it's one of those that makes me go, well, what would it need to go to A+, because golly, it's good. I mean, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm going to stick with an A, though, because A+, plus is reserved for perfect. You know what I mean? Although, you know, I, you know what? I'm going to keep it at an A because these thumb studs are too big. I mean, this is a great candidate for me to knock off some of that sharpness of those thumb studs because even if I took that whole tower levels you know even if I took all that off and smoothed this out this thumb stud would still work perfectly so yeah I'm gonna leave it at an A because of the big old thumb studs I don't know it's kind of a cheat I guess ergonomics I mean comfortable in hand wow I love the raw titanium that stone wash 
I mean, I'm just a big fan of stonewashed titanium. I, I much prefer it over the anodized because this is smooth as glass. And, you know, gripping a knife like that, it just, I don't know, I'm kind of over it. It's just too slick in hand. I'm, I'm not a fan. Like, if I'm just going to put it in a case, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's a gorgeous knife. Um, honestly, the whole thing could be anodized. You know what I mean? But, I mean, I kind of evaluate it as if I was going to put it in my pocket. Am I going to put this in my pocket? No, probably not. Y'all know, I'm a Tucson collector. So, they come in, I... I check them in, and then I put them in a case. I mean, I don't, I don't carry hardly any of these two sons. <clears throat> I just collect them. I mean, does that make me a, a trailer queen? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Some of y'all know what that means. Maybe not. All right. Uh, yeah, the ergonomics are stupid good. The pocket clip disappears. I mean, I'm gonna come up short of a confident grip. I mean, I'm gonna just bump up short there. It is extremely locked in, but again, this is another knife that if you look at my natural position for this, they put so much work into making this the grip of the knife. I, who who wields the knife like this? But, I mean, the jimping is for that. The handle is made. I mean, literally, the hand, the knife was designed to hold it here. I mean, the, this has been compromised to make this. Who does this? I don't know. Not me. I'd, I would never grip this knife like this. I mean, I don't know. I, anyways, I'm ranting about it, but I'm just, I'm not a fan of building the ergonomics of a knife so that basically the primary number one grip is like this. This, I mean, I, are you are you shaving with it? I don't know. I don't get it, man. But I wish they'd have just kept the design towards this grip right here. But instead, all the jimping is placed. I mean, everything is done for this grip. I mean, you surely, for a self-defense application, using this in any kind of self... You can't grip this like this. For any level of protecting yourself. No chance. You need to be back here in the handle. And it's pretty confident here. I mean, it's not quite confident because there's no finger guard. But yeah, that's my rant about these these the forward gripping knives. I just, I, yeah. Anyways. Uh, you can tell I don't like them. And this one qualifies. So that'll tell you how I feel about it. Not a fan. I mean, if you choke up on your knives like this, if you choke up, you're going to love this knife. That's why you're going to love it because it's super comfortable here. What a, such a natural grip position. Wonderful. Yep. <clears throat> um, about the pocket clip. I'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing. Just, <clears throat> pardon me, looking at it, I think it's going to do wonderful. Yep. Nice profile. Just a little bit sticking out. I mean, it's about as deep carry as you can expect for a milled titanium pocket clip. The tension's a little on the soft side. It's definitely not a dryer clip, but it wouldn't be hard to put some tension in this. Um, I wonder about safety. Where are we at? Can we touch? No, can't make blade contact, and the tip is protected. So the tip's good. The clip is good, and uh, I'm confident that I wouldn't make incidental contact with the blade in my pocket. I wonder if it's sharp. Mm, piece of paper. Here's a piece of magazine paper. Let's run it. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, buddy. I mean, that's the kind of sharp you want coming out of a factory knife, for sure. That's the way I want them. I don't want to have to put work in. I expect it to come sharp. To me, it's part of the price of, of the knife. Uh, price and availability on this TS413 in D2 steel. Where is it and what do I got to pay for it? Okay, searching the web. Uh, there's some live auctions going. d has got a couple that he's selling. Uh, six Leaf SL, uh, the Six Leaf sellers got a fixed price of like $99 or best offer. But to me, the spot for this knife, um, unless you want to play the live auction game with D-Win 99, 
which, I mean, that's where I got it. But the other source for this is White Mountain Knives. White Mountain Knives has this for $84. If you grab the code that's below for White Mountain Knives, DM10, DM10, no spaces, uh, put it in the coupon section in the cart and get you 10% off of that $84, which brings us down to 76 bucks. Titanium, anodized, I mean, D2 steel, wonderful piece. If this is attractive to you, I mean, is it worth 76 bucks? I think so. It's pretty, pretty nice two-sun. Wonderful action. Standard two-sun stuff. Um, excellent thumb flick. Spidey flick off the charts. Yeah. TS-413. Wong design in D2 steel. I mean, check it out, y'all. 